I cannot imagine a better combination of three people who have done so much for Israel, for Zionism, and for America as Miriam and Sheldon Adelson and David Friedman. And the fact that they come together tonight by having David being awarded the Sheldon and Miriam Adelson Award is just a wonderful exemplar of how American Jews can be so loyal to our country of choice, the United States, and yet remain so committed to the heritage of Israel, which we love so much. So it's my honor and pleasure <clears throat> to present, I wish I were there in person and could do it in person, the Miriam and Sheldon Adelson Award for work on behalf of Zionism to America's greatest ambassador to Israel, David Friedman. Thank you to my friend Mort Klein and to the entire membership and staff of ZOA. I'm truly honored to receive the Dr. Miriam and Sheldon Adelson Defender of Israel Award. I am honored because the award comes from one of the most vital organizations in the world in defending the rights of the Jewish state. And I'm especially honored because the award is named for the Adelsons, a couple whose philanthropic support for the state of Israel and the Jewish people has no equal. A little more than three years ago, I received the Shulman Award from ZOA. In my acceptance speech, I said to rousing applause that it was just a matter of time before President Trump recognized Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. Well, it wasn't a matter of much time. In fact, that recognition occurred less than two weeks after I spoke at the dinner. Since then, you all know President Trump's record on Israel, from moving the embassy to Jerusalem, to recognizing Israeli sovereignty over the Golan Heights, to exiting the disastrous JCPOA, to killing arch-terrorists, to recognizing the legality of Israeli communities situated in Judea and Samaria, to outlawing BDS-assisting anti-Israel labeling requirements, to so much more. President Trump's record speaks for itself. Many say that President Trump is the most pro-Israel president ever to occupy the Oval Office. Respectfully, I think that's the wrong term. In this day and age, I no longer know what pro-Israel means. Many far-left organizations claim to be pro-Israel. Bernie Sanders and members of the squad claim to be pro-Israel. Indeed, anyone who thinks they know better than Israel itself with regard to how Israel should act claims to be pro-Israel. Pro-Israel is a term like so many others that once had a well-understood meaning, but today has been hijacked, mangled, and manipulated, occasionally to suit an extreme agenda. So I'm going to offer a different characterization of President Trump that I think you'll appreciate. While certainly pro-Israel, President Trump is the most pro-Zionist president to occupy the Oval Office. What's the difference between pro-Israel and pro-Zionist? Potentially, a lot. There's a significant segment of the pro-Israel crowd that purport to be committed to saving Israel from itself. Imagine that. They'll sip brandy in the salons of New York, Los Angeles, and Europe, secure in the knowledge that no nation can threaten their safety, and they offer their unsolicited wisdom and guidance regarding what's best for the Jewish state. They'll demand concessions, compromises, and even retreat, knowing full well that they bear none of the risks if their advice proves catastrophic. They'll claim to be pro-Israel, but their true goal is virtue signaling, demonstrating to the most progressive among them that they can be magnanimous as long as the cost falls on others. Are these folks pro-Israel? Of course not, but they claim to be. They advertise that they are, and they lobby naive and ill-informed members of the Washington community falsely claiming to be strongly pro-Israel. So let's drop that phrase and use pro-Zionist instead. What does it mean to be pro-Zionist? It means simply to endorse, to endorse the existence of an independent Jewish state in the land of Israel, as eloquently stated in the last lines of Hatikva, Israel's national anthem, to be a free nation in the Jewish homeland, the land of Zion and Jerusalem. To be pro-Zionist is to accept the right of Israel and its democratic leadership to chart their own path. It doesn't mean that Israel is beyond criticism, but it is antithetical to Zionism that Israel 
should be coerced from external sources. Zionism seeks the establishment of Israel as a free nation in its biblical homeland. But that freedom is lost. If Israel constantly is leveraged by a foreign power, even a benevolent one, against the will of its own people. Now what about an American group that seeks to compel Israel to act against the democratic will of its own people by lobbying America, Israel's indispensable ally, to force Israel on an undemocratic path? There's nothing wrong with an American citizen petitioning his or her government for any lawful relief, but that is completely inconsistent with being a Zionist. Such a group can claim to be pro-Israel, and we can debate whether it is. But it cannot be disputed that such a group decidedly is anti-Zionist. It is anti-Zionist because it is seeking to deprive Israel of its national free will. The Trump administration is pro-Zionist because fundamentally, we believe, that Israel has the right to make decisions for itself on vital issues affecting its population. We trust the Israeli people. We trust the Israeli electorate. We believe that, like most countries, Israel knows best for what's best for Israel. Even more so, we know what's best for America, and a strong, secure, and prosperous Israel is decidedly in the best interest of America, whether in terms of our security, financial well-being, or our moral compass. To be clear, this is not an issue of right versus left. Although I disagree with some of the positions of the Israeli left, I would never challenge their good faith or their right to be heard. They send their kids to the army, pay their taxes, and assume the risks of living in a dangerous neighborhood. They are patriots, they love their country, and they are Zionists pursuing their vision of the Zionist dreams. Over the years, there have been left-wing Israeli governments, and they have made decisions that I have disagreed with. But it would never occur to me to lobby American leadership to compel Israel to reach a different decision because as a Zionist, I have always respected and held sacred the right of Israel to decide what's best for itself. It's high time for the American left who trumpet the values of liberal democracy to extend that same courtesy to Israel. Don't claim to be pro-Israel. You've successfully rendered that term all but meaningless. Be pro-Zionist. Allow Israel the same rights of self-governance that you would extend to any other nation. Don't ever assume that living in America, a vast, powerful, and wealthy nation surrounded by the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans and two highly reliable allies, don't assume you're in a position to know more than Israelis about what's best for Israel. Here's a newsflash. You don't. Today, more than ever, it's just not enough to be pro-Israel. One must be pro-Zionist, and that's why I am deeply honored to receive the Adelson Award from an organization that proudly stands for that principle, the Zionist Organization of America. Thank you. May God bless you, may God bless Israel, and may God bless the United States of America.